Welcome to our demonstration of Site Failover and Recovery with VMware vCenter Site Recovery Manager. This scenario starts with us in the middle of a disaster. We need to run a recovery plan immediately that will fail over resources currently running on Site A, Anaheim, to a recovery environment at Site B, Boulder. We start looking at the unified web interface for Site Recovery Manager at Site B. We can see information about our sites, how resources are mapped between protected and recovery sites, and the status of the environment. As we are in the middle of a disaster, we need to navigate to our recovery plans to start the recovery process. Looking at our recovery plans, we see from the names that we have different plans that we can execute. In our case, recovering a specific application or recovering our site. In this scenario, our entire site is impacted. So we are going to run a recovery plan that will ensure all our systems are available at our recovery site. We click on the Recover button to initiate the process. This is a process that will impact operations, so we need to confirm that we understand this. Since we are currently experiencing a disaster, we want to return to normal operations as quickly as possible. A short RTO, or recovery time objective, is important, and running the recovery plan in disaster recovery mode will help us meet it as it will attempt all the steps of the plan, but will carry on running whether or not we experience errors. We don't want to slow down the recovery if our protected site is partially or completely unavailable. This is the reason we select this option. Now that the recovery plan is running, let's quickly review the steps that it will work through. To minimize the total time the application is down, the storage will be synchronized. VMs are shut down in the reverse order in which they will be started up. If hosts are kept in standby mode at the recovery site, the host will be restored from that. Synchronize storage to get a final copy of the VMs after they've been shut down. Change the recovery site storage to writable, and then power on VMs in the order we've defined. This is controlled by priority groups and VM dependencies within priority groups. This is also the point where the VM's IP address would be changed. Notice that there are timestamps for each step. Our recovery plan has completed successfully, and now our VMs are running at our recovery site. This concludes the demonstration of Site Failover and Recovery with VMware vCenter Site Recovery Manager. Thank you.